I think we're going to start. Okay. Um, if you had come in before, I said that I'm going to be uh, just working on a word processing document today. Word processing document today. I'm not going to do desktop publishing, but I am going to send you a link to um, a person who does it very well. One thing I want to do before we start is I want to do a little poll just so we know um, how many, what the, not the areas of interest, what the expertise level is for the people who are in here. So I'm just going to launch a poll and if you could answer it, um, it would be good. So I'm going to launch it now. Okay, and if you could just, it's only two questions, if you could just click on the answers so we know what we're dealing with. Good. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm going to share the poll with you. Um, and I'm going to share the results. And a lot of you are novices, but most of you have used it. And on what device to use pages on is the Mac. Everything that I did, well, we'll be doing this on a Mac. Everything that I did um, that I'll be sending you, I will be sending you a booklet. I will be sending you a list of references. And I'm also going to send you a list of Mac shortcuts. But everything that I did, except the Mac shortcuts, I didn't do that one, uh, will be um, generated in pages. So. Okay, so I'm going to stop the sharing. I'm going to download it. Ah, shoot. Stop the sharing. Okay, great. Close this poll. This is a little different for me because usually when I do this, I'm on a PC, I'm on a Mac now. So this is a little different. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen. And we are going to look at pages. And I don't see it. <laughs> so I'm going to come back. I'm going to have to find it. I had it up there. It isn't there now for some reason, but that's fine. I'll get it up. Okay. Okay, so you should see my screen. When you open up pages, this is what you see. And what you see is the templates page. So you can see all the templates. The blank templates will just open up a blank template. There are two different types of pages you can make. You can make um, a word processing document or you can make a desktop publishing document. We're just going to work on word processing today. Um, I want to go also through the objectives of the class, which I didn't do, but I should. Uh, by the end of class, you are going to know how to access templates, which we just did. You're going to use, uh, know how to use and create styles, which are very important, not just for pages. If you use Word, or if you use Google Docs, they're important for that too. I'm gonna to show you why. And um, we're gonna also insert images, tables, and charts. Uh, Pages is a free software that comes with Apple. Um, for what it is, it's fine. Uh, there's certain things you can't do with it, but I have to say, as far as graphics goes, it's beautiful. Um, images, We'll get into that, but text boxes, you can, it, it, it just does a beautiful job with images. And also it does a beautiful job with templates. So we're going to do word processing templates today, but if you wanted to, they have newsletters, they have resumes, they have all these things that are um, very beautiful. So um, you can use them as a basis for what you are going to be doing, but in this instance, in this one, we're going to be doing word processing documents. So, so the first thing you do is I'm going to click on all templates 
And I'm just going to do a blank template and I'm going to click on create from the bottom of the screen. Well, it's doing that. doing something odd that it's never done before, but that's okay. Just wanna create a blank template. I was going very slow. Okay, so now we have our blank template and I stopped screen sharing. I'll have to go back to screen share. And this is our blank template. I'm gonna make it a little bigger. You make things bigger in, um, on a Mac by clicking on, um, at the left of the screen, you're gonna see three buttons. You're gonna see a red, that means close it out. Um, yellow is minimize and green is make it bigger. So I'm gonna make it bigger. And I'm gonna move my screen so I can see a little bit. I can. Does everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay. At the very top of the screen, you have something called a menu bar. And I, one thing that I don't like about it, and you cannot get it to stay there. I would love it to stay there, but it won't. It keeps popping on and off, but it's, it's there. So if you ever need it, to move your cursor to the top and it'll come down. And then under that, you have the toolbar, this right here that I am moving my cursor. Can you see my cursor? Yes. Moving around, well, that's the toolbar. I'm gonna get rid of myself. I don't wanna see myself. Okay, so the first thing that you wanna do is you want to set up your environment. So I want the ruler to show. I always want the ruler, so I'm gonna click on view and I'm gonna click on show ruler. The other thing that I want to do because I want it to be very easy for me to use is I'm gonna click on view again and I'm gonna show the layout. And the layout basically is the margins and at the very top, you can see the headers and the footers. So I wanna see that just so I know where I'm, I'm going to. The other thing that I, I will show you, and I actually leave on, I know a lot, a lot of people don't like it, but I do like it, is um, it's called invisibles. And I do like the invisibles. And the invisibles basically are paragraph and uh, markings and space markings. And I sort of like to see it just so I know what I'm doing. So, okay, so I've got my environment done. Now what I wanna do is I wanna add thumbnails and I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna click on the down arrow over here. This is a tool and you can view, if you had, if you wanted to view a table of contents, basically the table of contents is headers that you have, we'll talk about that in a minute. I could just view the document only. Um, I could do other things, but what I wanna do is I wanna see the page thumbnails. And the page thumbnails just show me, it shows me the pages of my document. But I wanna tell you why they're important in a bit. But what now I want you to know what kind of document that we're looking at. Okay, so I'm looking at a word processing document, hopefully. And the reason that I'm doing, that I can tell it's a word processing document is right here. Do you see the flashing cursor up there, the top? Yes. Okay. So. If there's a flashing cursor, that means it's a word processing, doc, a word processing document. In pages, you could just start typing. And then if you're in a word processing document, if you're in a desktop publishing document, you have to make a text box. And we will make a text box in this class because you don't have to be, um, you can use a text box in anything, but if you're in a word processing document, 
you have to type in a text box, not a word processing, a desktop publishing. And how can you tell if you're in a word processing document or a text box? Right here that always comes up, this is called the inspector and it comes up on the right-hand side of your screen. It says right here that I'm in text and it says right here formatting. I wanna click on at the top, I wanna to click on document. Okay, so when I'm in document, I'm in the document tab and over here, right here, there is a check mark and it says document body. That means I can type in the document body. If I uncheck it, I'm gonna get this thing that says, are you sure you wanna to convert to a page layout uh, document? Which would mean that I'd have to put in text boxes. I don't want to, so I'm gonna cancel it and I'm gonna make it there. Here, I can also change my layout. I can uh, change my orientation if I wanted landscape. I can change my headers, like if I wanted my header to be smaller at the bottom. I can also change my margins. I can add hyphenation if I want to. Um, I usually don't do that, but if you want to, that's fine. That means that uh, pages will automatically hyphenate. Ligatures. Ligatures are uh, font-based, and if two fonts are together, they'll make it look like... Um, I know you've seen them, but they'll make it fancy. So that's what ligatures is. So I, I just left it on. They don't always work to, with different fonts. Okay, so now your environment is ready. But I do wanna talk about the toolbar. So these are the tools that always will stay here. But these are other tools like insert, table, chart, text, shape, media, media. If you click the down arrow, you can insert fonts, you can insert a gallery, um, image gallery. That means you can have them stacked. Uh, it doesn't usually work that well. Uh, one thing that Pages doesn't do is you cannot save it as an HTML file. And an HTML file is something that you could like just make a pages document and add it to uh, a website. You can't do that with pages. The other thing is if it's grayed out, comments are grayed out and mask is grayed out. Mask is basically if you wanted to cut something and that would be an image. If I want to add more tools, I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on customize tools bar and it brings up all the tools that I can add to the toolbar if I wanted to. Right now, I'm not gonna add any, but I could, and I also can take them off. So if I didn't want something, I could drag it and take it off. It's very easy to uh, add tools to it. So right now, I, I don't wanna add any, but if I did, did need to, I could. So get rid of this. Go down. So are there any questions? See if I could close this. A, a stupid question? Yeah. How do I right click if I only have that trackpad, that pad on my computer? You can right click. Today. Uh I have done it. I actually go into the middle of it. Oh, I for this class, I got a mouse. Okay. But usually I don't. I usually okay. just right click. I do it with two fingers usually. So you okay. got to experiment a little, but I do do it. Thank you. So, um, you can do it with it um, in your, and actually I'll send this to you after class. Um, in your Mac, there is a tutorial that shows you how to use the trackpad. But you can right click and it right clicking, you have to do a lot of right clicking on a Mac. And I'll we'll be doing right clicking and I'll show you how to do that. Thank you. So one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop my screen sharing just because I can't get out of this. So see if I can. Let's see if I can get out of this. 
because it won't let me go down. Okay. Any other questions? Well, Steve said he never saw um, the top buttons move on their own. What do you mean? I'll unmute Steve, he can explain. Unmute okay, well, un if Steve can unmute himself. I think he's talking about the toolbar at the top. Oh, his doesn't, mine always goes. And I actually went on to, um, I went on to a website to see if I could get it not to, and it, it, it just does it. So, um, because I, I would like to, to have the toolbar, um, the menu bar stay, but it, it won't do it. Now How I can I right click on it with an iPad? I don't know how you could right click on something with an iPad. That, that's actually a good question. And I that's will right. find that out for you. With an iPad, I have an iPad at home, at, but it isn't, a, we have a newer iPad here and I'll try to see if, how old your iPad? Oh, it's, it's kind of old. Cause I've got a very old iPad, but I can't add anything to it. I'll see if we can um, add, pages to an iPad and to see what it will do. I think some iPads here have pages. My, my pages. iPad has pages on and I can bring that in. You can see. Okay, so. I think what Steve Stephen was talking about is when you had that up, that top uh, toolbar, it, they were wiggling. At, like on my iPhone, if uh -huh. I delete something, they wiggle. It, they were wiggling like that, but there was no X anywhere to, you know, delete something. You know what I mean? Okay, I'm just gonna have to quit this and come back in because it won't let me out of it. It's like it's shouldn't have got in there. It won't let me get out. Yeah, everything's sort of wiggling. You're right. We just don't know the purpose of that. Yeah. Because <laughs> on the iPhone, the purpose is to delete that particular icon. Wait a minute. I'm just going to do this. It won't change. Ugh. Okay, I'm gonna to have to get out of this just because it won't. Be with you in a minute. <laughs> I'm sorry. It won't get out of the pages. Won't get out of pages. Won't lose this. Ugh. Okay, no limit. Okay. Okay. I don't know why it, would, it did that, but it did. So I'm gonna share my screen again. Something new. Okay, so. That's your toolbar. I have to set everything up again because it wouldn't let me out, but that's fine. So I'm gonna click on, uh, again, the view. Click on view. I'm gonna go page thumbnails. I'm gonna go to the top and click on view. I'm gonna go with um, the ruler, view again. I'm going to go with the layout view again. I'm going to go with invisibles. Okay, so now we're back to that. I have everything there. I know this is a word processing document. So I need a little bit of um, text. 
So I have downloaded some text from a Lorem thing uh, that I downloaded. So I'm going to click on uh, com Command V, and I have some text now. So, okay. When I was making the handout for this, which I will be sending you, every time I opened it, everything would move. And I thought, oh, gosh. So I was reading about this. And there are two types of text breaks. And you click on Insert. From the very top in the menu bar, there is a page break and a section break. When I put in page breaks, every time I opened up pages, all my images, everything would be moved around. And I thought, oh, this is terrible. I'm never going to get this done. So if you put in a section break instead of a page break, it seems to keep everything on the page. The reason being, if you put in a page break, so let me put in a page break here. I'm going to go down and put a page break. I'll put it here. I'm going to put a page break. And I'm going to, that's where my flash occur, flashing cursor is. I'm going to go up to insert. I'm going to go to page break. And what it does is it just puts it on the next page. So I'm going to undo that by doing a command Z. Command Z is undo on a Mac. If you wanted to redo something, you hold on command Z and you add the shift key. So it's shift command Z, that's redo. And I'm going to be sending you a list of shortcuts. So let me do that again. I'm going to command shift Z and I'll put it back here. You're going to notice here that let's say I wanted to move this around for some reason. I can't do it because I have a page break in there. So I'm going to take the page break off. I'm going to do a command Z to take it off. And I'm going to add a section break instead of a page break. And section breaks, if you put in section breaks, another thing that it does, sections allow you to, uh, allow you to add page numbers and different things like that. But I'm just gonna add a section break. So I'm gonna click on view, no insert, section break. And I can see this little I didn't turn in invisibles. I'm going to put my invisibles on. So So I put on a section break. And you should see it here, then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to put on another section break. I'll put it here. And then I'll go down and put another section break in. Okay, so now what I can do is I can move these pages. So if you put in a section break, like in Word, you could always do that. But if you put in a section break, you can move these pages around. And also if you're working with pages, it tends to have your images stay and everything stays the same. So um, instead of putting in a page break, think of putting in a section break because you can move things around then. So like if you have a big paper and you think, you know, I'm going to put a section and I don't like this, I'm going to move this around over here, move this here. With the page break, you can't do that. So think about putting in section breaks. Any questions? Okay. I'm going to get rid of, I'll just leave them in. Okay. 
So, looked at the page environment. You are going to get this this document. Okay. What's the difference between a word processing document? I did that. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the importance of styles. And this is very important in anything that you do, even a Word document, yeah, a Google question. Doc. Uh-huh. Uh, what does lorem mean? What does what mean? Lorem. You know, like the stuff that- Oh, you this is just placeholder text. So there's an app that you can get um, from the Apple store. It's free of charge. And you use it for placeholder text. A lot of people think it's Greek, but it's nothing. It's called lorem epsom text. And you can do that on a Word document too. And I'll, if you do use Word, I'll send you the um, formula to do that on it. You can, um, but in this case, I just copied and pasted it just so I had something to do. So I think I am gonna get rid of this. To get rid of section breaks, you just double click on them and hit delete. So I'm just gonna get rid of this because I want to be at the top. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to add styles to our page. Okay, so this is an easy way to add spacing and other things like that too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the chevron right here. See it? And it says default update. This is the default style. So I'm going to click here. It's going to update it. Why did that change? Okay. And you can see all the styles that are in here. You have title, you have subtitle, you have heading, you have heading one, two, three, four, five. You can add styles to your document. And this is something you do want to do because if you add styles to a document, you can add spacing, but you also can add something called um, a table of contents. If you don't have styles, you're going to have to make your own table of contents. So you want to add styles. So what I'm going to do is going to click here and I'm going to write the word box and hit the enter key. Then I'm going to double click it. I'm going to click on the chevron and I'm going to make this heading one. Then I'm going to go down the page and I'm going to type duck. I'm going to double click and I'm going to make this heading again okay so now i've made some headings also i want to change the body text so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click in the body text i'm going to click on the chevron and i'm going to click on body then i can change the font so maybe i want to make it I'll make it Garamond. Click on the arrow, the double arrows to get to the font. Keeps moving though. So I'll make a Garamond. And I want to make the point size 14. I can change the color if I wanted, but I'm just going to leave it black. I could change uh, the spacing. I could change it to uh, right now it's uh, left aligned. I can make it centered if I want. I can do all these things. I can add spaces before the paragraph. And I really want to do this, not before the paragraph, but I want to do it after the paragraph. When you type a document, you can just keep typing, typing, typing. And at the paragraph, you hit the enter key and it should add spacing and you can start typing again. You're not supposed to add an extra return. So I'm going to just put it eight point. And other things I can do, I can, if I wanted to, I could add bulleted text, I could have a drop cap, but I'm just going to leave it this way. 
And right now, notice at the very top says body asterisk update. I'm gonna update it. So now what it does is it goes through the whole document and it looks for the, the body text and it updates it. So right here, because I had it. I'm gonna click on body and it's gonna update it. So that's what you wanna do. You wanna make it look like what you want it to be and you're gonna update it. One thing that you can do, and it's in your books and we don't go through it here, but you can make a template. So if you get everything the way you want it to be, then you can make a template and you can just update the whole thing. And you could just open up the template. It'll be when you open up um, a new thing that lists of templates in the very beginning, that's where the template that you made would be. So if you have the things you wanted, you say, I have a, a report, my reports have to be in Helvetica, they have to be double spaced. This is where you would do it. You would do it from this text and you would change everything and then it would keep it. Uh, because every time you open up a new document, you're gonna have to redo everything. So save it as a template. Do you have any questions? Okay. So where do you save that as a template? I see under body, but where's the same? You would click on at the very top. Okay, it's just not coming up. The very top, there's this, you would click on file, save as, and you would save it as a template. Okay. Um, because it'll, and then when you open up, you'd give it a name. And then when you open up, um, you could do a control N, all your list of templates come up and it would come up in there. So, Thank you. So you get it that way and you save it as a template. And actually, um, there's a little bit in your student guides, but I'll send you probably next week about saving as a template. I'll, I'll make a, a job aid for you. Thank you. Okay, great. Take that down. Okay, so now we have some subtitles, different things in here. And I'm gonna get rid of this too. No, I'm not, I'm gonna leave it. Okay, so we have some subtitles. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to insert a table of contents. Yeah, so I'm gonna click on insert table of contents. And you can insert different tables of contents. Um, you can insert it for the document. You can make a table of contents for a section, or you can make it for multiple sections. It says to next occurrence, that means it's gonna go to the next section and it'll make a table of contents. But I'm gonna do the documents. So I'm gonna click on document. And what it does is it automatically generates a table of contents for you. So, Anytime you put a header or a footer or anything like that, a table of contents will appear and you wanna click on here and you wanna to go to format and go to text from the top because table of contents is gonna show up right here on the format. It's called an inspector. It's gonna show up, but click on text and right here, I want to add, it's called leaders. So what I'm going to do is I am going to click here. It's called the leader. And it says right here, none. I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to add some spacing because it's just easier for you to see. So I'm going to click there. And it's going to add some spacing. So anytime I add something to this, it's going to come it's gonna to add to it. So anytime I add a heading, I automatically add to it. I don't have to do anything like in Word. You have to click on this little um, brown circle here. You don't have to do anything. So, and you can change the line spacing. You can change anything. You can make it centered. You can do anything. You can actually change the format. If I wanted it to be, I don't want it Helvetica. I could change it to any, 
perform it on anything that I wanted to, like if I wanted to have a Garamond again, I could do that. So that it, okay, so now it's Garamond. So I can do anything I want with that. Any questions? Okay, so right here, just gonna show you, I'm gonna add some more, I'm gonna call it uh, base. And I'm gonna make base a heading, click on the chevron and make it a heading. And then when I go up to the table of contents, it's already in there for me, so. Does a nice job. You don't have to worry about it after you've done it. It'll automatically update. Any questions? No. Nope. Okay, I got some more stuff. Okay, so now I've got my table of contents and your table of contents is always its own section. That's what pages does. Because if you forget to, um, insert sections, it will insert, it's, it will be in its own section. So you don't have to worry about that. And you can tell sections by when you click on them, they're dark blue. If you just had pages, it would be light blue. So if something's dark blue, that means that it's a section and you could move it around. Okay, so I got base there, I got this. Okay, so that is the importance of styles. Okay, we generated a table of contents. See what that looks like. Talked about that. Okay, the other thing that you can see on here is you can see your word count. So right down here, I see my word count pages. To get to that, you would click here on the view. This is called the view tab, the view tool. You could also get it from the view uh, tab on your um menu bar, but I'm going to click on, I'll click hide pages, but I'm going to put it back on show pages. So right here, you can move this anywhere you want. I'm going to move it right here so you can see it. It shows me I have six pages. So if I click on it, on these little arrows, it's going to tell me I have Three characters without spaces, three characters with spaces, one word, one paragraph, one page. So I don't know why it's doing that, but I'll say just one paragraph and it'll show me all that. So something wrong there. Right now it's telling me, because I was in the table of contents, now it's telling me I have 26 paragraphs. So you can have this any way you want. Probably the best one would be six pages for pages, but that shows up. If you don't want to see it, you just click a view and then you hide it. Okay. So the layout. Okay. Adding page numbers. Because we can see the layout, because we did a command L, we can see the layout and the layout right here at the very top I have a header the bottom I have a footer so if I click on the bottom footer it's going to ask me to insert a page number and I'm just going to click on it and it's going to ask me well what kind of page number do you want to insert so I could do page one, page one of six, page one like that, or page one of six. I'm gonna take the middle one. And then at the side, on the inspector, you'll see that if you move down the inspector, you could do continuous and everything like that. But if I go down the page, I can see that I've added a page number there. I can add other things to that too, but this is basic. So I think that's probably what you would want to see. 
Okay. Okay. Any questions? No questions. Okay. Now, you can insert different things into a pages document. I don't know why this is on. So you can insert a lot of things into a pages document. You can insert a table, you can insert a chart, you can insert a text box, you can insert a shape, and you can insert media. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to insert a table. So I'm gonna go right before duck and I'm gonna click on table. And there are four types of tables that you can insert. You can insert a header table with headers. You can insert a basic table. You can insert a plain table. This is a plain one. And you can insert one that you could add sums to. And then you can go through here and you say, oh, okay, I'd like, to, I'd like to do a red one or an orange one or nothing, but I'm gonna go back. You see all these tables that you have that you could do. I think I'll do a blue one. And the one that I picked was a sum one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in some information. Right here, you can see at the very top, you have a circle. That means that you can move the table. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Over here, this means you can add columns. So if I wanted more columns, I could add columns. I'm actually gonna to have to go, I'm gonna go, well, that's fine with what I have. And then I'm gonna click here and this is where you can add rows. Also, you can add rows by clicking on the bottom and hitting the tab key, just like you can in um, Google Docs and Word. It works the same name. So at the very top, I'm going to type sales person. Then I'm going to type in Q1, Q2, Q3, and I am going to add a column, I'm gonna click on five, Q4. So to select a row, I'm gonna click on row one and I'm gonna make everything centered. And I am also going to maybe change the font. I might leave it Helvetica, but I'll make it, instead of 10, I'll make it 12. Okay. So I have other things that I can do. I can wrap taxes in the cell. If I make a cell bigger, I'm gonna make this top a little bit bigger. I can center it in the cell so I can move it over or if I can move it at the bottom if I wanted to. I'm just gonna leave it there. I made it a little bigger. Okay, so I'm gonna put in the salesperson, Roy, and I'm gonna put 245, 5,000, 456, and then I'll have Joy. I don't want that. Just putting some numbers in. Okay, and I think maybe, and I hit it enter, so I don't want to do that. I'll do control Z to stop that. I'll put, maybe I'm going to get rid of this. So to click here, I can right click on here and I'm going to click delete. It should delete the row for me. Okay, so now I just have one sum row. And if I wanted to make this currency, I would click from the inspector over here, I'd click on sell. Yeah. 
I can change it to currency. Right here, it says data format. I click on the cell, click on the two arrows from the top, and I'm going to make a currency. And I make a currency, it adds the dollar sign and it also adds two decimal spaces. I don't want the decimal spaces. So I'm going to get rid of them. And I'm going to add a thousand separator because I like that. And the counting style, it, it lets the dollar sign um, be left aligned. I sort of like that. So I'm going to leave that. Okay. So now I can, just like in Excel or anything else, I can put a formula in. I'm going to equal. I'm going to sum. I'm going to sum um, B2 by B3 and hit the enter key. And it gives me that. And then if you know anything about um, Excel, you have this little handle. Let's see if it works. I'm going to move it over. Didn't seem to work. Nope. Well, I could copy it. Then I'm going to paste it and see if it works. Yep. So I'm just, all I have to do is click on copy, paste. Copy. Are you right clicking for all of that? Yes, I am. I'm right clicking for all of that. So your right click comes up. So it's pretty easy to make a table. Uh, the only thing that I don't like about pages tables, I use tables to align things. And um, I also like to make them invisible. And you really can't do that with pages. Um, you have the simple table. You also cannot add, which I do a lot, I add images to a table to align them and you can't do that with pages, you know, but it's fine. If you wanted to move this table, and I'm just gonna make these a little smaller. To make something, like if I wanted to make these smaller, I actually could, could do it, have all of them the same, but I'm just gonna drag it over to look two headed arrow i'm going to try to drag it over at the very top that's where i have to drag it over this way i'm thinking i'm in word word you could do it that way but you can't hear so i'm going to just drag it over okay so now what i want to do is i want to Probably. I'd probably make everything the same, but right now I don't care. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this thing right here. And that will allow me to move the table. But I can't move the table. Until I click on arrange. And there are two things in all images, in all tables, anything you insert, you click on arrange and it says move with text or stay on page. I'm gonna click on stay on page and I'm gonna click on this little circle on the left. And when I put stay on page, I can move this all around the table, all around the area that I want. But I'm just gonna move it to the middle. Another thing that if you wanna right click on something, that's not gonna let me, I did it before. Not for tables, obviously. So I'm just gonna move it around. I have to do it with the circle and I can move it anywhere I want. But you have to say, stay on page in order to move it. Any questions? No questions. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do, we just did a table. I'm gonna go down the page a little bit. I'm gonna find this. I'm gonna go here, give myself a little space. 
I'm going to click on insert a chart. And when I click on insert a chart, uh, there's all different charts I can insert. I can insert a 2D chart. I can insert a 3D chart. I can insert an interactive chart. We do do a chart class for Excel. And I just want to tell you, don't use 3D charts. They're cool looking, but they uh, skew the data. So in an interactive chart, this is not the, this is not, this is basic. So always use the three, uh, 2D chart. It's just easier for people to understand. Uh, so I'm gonna pick one that most people have. So I'm gonna pick this chart. Okay, and now what comes up from, if you notice on the right-hand side in the inspector, I can change the color of the chart if I want to. I can add a title to the chart. I could just double click in here to add a title. And I could call it sales. And I can, if I wanted to, I can add a shadow. I'm not gonna do that. Go back to chart. Um, I can round the corners of this if I wanted to. I could click on round the corners, but I don't want to. I'll just leave it the way it is. I can add shadows. I could do all this stuff. Um, I can add a legend or can take the legend off. I can add captions. I can add a border. One thing that I do want to do is I want to edit the chart data and it's very easy to do that. So I'm going to click on this little button called edit the chart data. And again, I'll have um, Roy, God, who the other person was, but I'll make it Nadine now. And then I'll put quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. I don't think there's anything more. Nope. Okay. So then I'll just put some numbers in. Okay, so let's see what it looks like now. Okay, so I edited the chart data and this is what it looks like. And I can add other things to the chart. I have all these uh, different things I can add like value labels if I wanted to. If I wanted to do uh, maybe percentage, I could add that. That wouldn't make sense though. I could do number, that probably would be better. Um, I can do all these different things to the chart. Any questions? Okay, now my favorite, well, also my favorite, one of my favorites is, um, I'm gonna click here, is media. So you can add photos, movies, music, you can record audio. I'm gonna just click on photos. And what Pages does is it brings up the finder and I'm gonna click on, um, I'll think, click on favorites. And then I'm gonna click on, double click here. and it adds the image to my document. To make something smaller, what you wanna do is you want to, I always hold down the shift key and I drag from the diagonal. That makes it in proportion. Sometimes you don't have to hold down the shift key. I just tend to do that. And right here, you'll see a range. Do you want it to stay on page? That means you can move it. Do you want it to move with page? I'm gonna leave it move with text. 
And you can see, how do you want the text to wrap? I can have it automatic. I can have it around. I can have it above and below if I wanted to. I can have it in line with text or I can have none, but I'm just gonna click in uh, around, sort of like that. Okay, I'm gonna go back to style because the inspector changes. And right here, this is where I think it's really, pages really shines. If you click on the styles, you can see it adds a, um, like a reflection. There, it just adds a shadow. There, it adds a border. Then it adds a white border. And here, you can make it like a Polaroid. And another thing that you could do, I'm going to go back to the first one, is you can add a border. And you can do also do this with a lot of things. So to add a border, I'm going to, maybe I'll add this border. And then you click on line. And you can add like a line like this, like somebody drew it. And I can make it a color. You can click on the color wheel or you can click here and pick a color. I'm gonna click on the color wheel because I wanna show you something. It comes up, come on, cut a wheel. There, okay. The color wheel comes up. If I click here, I can see different colors. And I also can see, I think this is sort of cool, pencils, but I'm just gonna click on the, well, I could click on a pencil and it would change it to that color or that color. But there's something in most desktop publishing uh, or paint products, it's called the eyedropper. So I'm gonna click on the eyedropper and I'm going to pick a color and I'm gonna pick this red color. So I'm gonna pick that. And now it changed it to the red color is in the border. So you can click on the eyedropper and you can do this in other things too. I, I don't know if you could do it in Word. I think you can do it in PowerPoint. And you click on the eyedropper and you can pick a color that's in your media and you can make your um, something else that color. So it, it's, it's very nice. So that's what I did. So that's where I think um, Pages shines. It shines in what you can do with the image. You also can click on the image and you can uh, change the exposure. You can edit the mass. Edit the mass means just cut. If I wanted to cut this, I could cut it right here, crop it. So I can crop it if I wanted to. Make this a little smaller, crop it up. So I could crop it. I could also enhance it. So I could um, change the picture, like the exposure to it. You have to play with these little things, saturation, enhance it. It's three o'clock. The keep our community safe. Masks are this. required for all patrons, including those okay. who have been vaccinated. Masks must cover your nose, mouth, and chin at all times. Patrons who do not wear masks properly will be asked to leave. Maintain a distance of at least six feet from others. Place all unwanted materials on marked carts. Wash or sanitize hands often and refrain from eating and drinking in the building. Thank you. Okay, there's two other things I want to do and we're going to wrap this up. Um, I wanna add a text box. I want you to see just how I'm gonna add this text box. So I'm gonna to go to the bottom over here and I'm gonna click on text box. And what Pages does, and it just puts one in there for you. And then I could type anything I want. Double click, I'm gonna type. Okay, so 
I can change the style of text, but if I click on style, I can change the background if I wanted to. So maybe I'll make it like this. And initially, let's see, control Z. No, it didn't. Initially, if I wanted to make this smaller or bigger, you have these, uh, this right here, I can move it if I want, you can move it anyway. Um, you have this to make it smaller or bigger. So initially after I do it, I can make it smaller or bigger. But if I say, you know, later, I wanna make this smaller. How do I do that? What you're gonna do is you're gonna click on a range and right here, this is the size. So also the position, you can change it. So let's say I wanna change the size, I can make it smaller. And then I can make this bigger if I wanted to. So then I can move it around. That's what's great about text boxes. And that's why it's in, um, in desktop publishing, you use them. You have to have a text box to start typing. It's because you can move them all around which you cannot do with this. So that's why you'd want to use a text box. And I want to also show you shapes. So if you click on shapes, this one I find very uh, easy to use and also very helpful is the arrow. You can change the arrow, you can move it around. I can move it here, move it there. And then I can change the color of it. So I'm going to go to style, always go to style and Right here, I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna make it red, and maybe I'm gonna make it four points. Other shapes you have, I'm gonna click on this one. This shape is actually a text box. So I can type in it. I can change the style of it, I can make it red. I can change the size of it. I with look here, make it bigger. Okay, so I think I've got through anything. Does anyone have any questions or they have a question that they wanna know about pages and maybe I can help them with? Stephanie, do you have your hand raised? Did you have a question? Yes, yeah. yes, Annie, hi. Hi. Um, I hadn't seen you in a while. Hey, I got a question. Um, mm -hmm. On page six, where you had the photo, can you take that photo and make a water or an ink mark and have the writing on top Will pages will just let us do that feature like in Word? You know, I don't know if the, they will, but I'll look into that and I'll get back to you. And I'll if it does, if it if it lets you make a watermark, I yes. will tell you. Um, I'm gonna send you how to make a template, which involves placeholders and stuff like that. But I'll send you. Um, I'll see if you can make a watermark. Okay, thank you. Great class. Okay, anyone else? If there wasn't something that I, I looked through, and I'm sorry Thanks. at the beginning I had some terrible. It was really great. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. And I have to say, I have a new respect for pages. I am going to be sending you a manual that I did do mostly in pages, which, ugh. but remember about that section because of uh, the section break and that's in your book because it was driving me nuts. Every time I opened up the Mac and I got onto pages, everything that I did was changed. And it was because I just had pages. I didn't have sections. So if you wanna make sure that something uh, looks the way you want it to look, instead of putting a page break in, put a section break in. I do have one more question. Uh -huh. When you go under media and you want to put in a media file, does that media have to already be existing and stored on your computer or can you go in Cyberland and grab it? 
I think if you click on choose, it, it lets you, I think, go onto your, um, your iCloud drive. I want to say also you can get it from, um, like if you have an iPhone or something, you can get it from there. So that's really um, where you can get it from. So okay. um, one thing that you can do if you see something, you can save it. Um, this doesn't let you. In Word, you can actually click on something, a, a Word document, you could click on it and say save as, but this won't let you do it. But yeah, you should be able to take it from, um, the internet and get it on there, but um, I don't know how to, it would depend on which, what you're doing, so. Annie, um, we have another question. So uh -huh. um, is there gonna be like a replay of this? You know, will they be able to? Did I record this? Yeah, you said you were recording, you turned recording on. Are you, am I recording it? You said you, you turned Did I turn it back on? It's on, yeah. it's on. It's on, okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was fooling with my hair and I thought, did I turn it back on? Yes, so you I did turn it, turn it back on. on. Okay, good. <laughs> so, yeah, so we, we'll, we'll replay this. So um, we'll have it up probably in about a week and I'll send you a link to it after it comes up. But um, you are going to get a book. And if you ever have any questions about that, just give me a call. We are going to have a Sheets class. Google, is it Google Sheets? No. I forget what, what the, we are going to have another cl numbers, class about uh, numbers. pages and Mac whatever the other one numbers. is. Numbers. Numbers. Okay. I'm, you know, it's so confusing. I have, especially when you're using a Mac, because all the commands, I'm a big shortcut person and like command Z is undo and on, um, on a, a computer, it's control Z. And on a Mac, you also have a control key. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So then when I get onto the next one, I'm trying to use the same shortcuts on a PC that I use on a Mac. And it's like, oh gosh. So, but it is, um, but I was really surprised what pages can do. It can do an awful lot. But um, if you ever have any questions or anything, just give us a call. Um, I will be sending you out some stuff probably tomorrow because I have to redo my book because I found things that I didn't like in it. So, but I'll be sending out the book and also look at that recording um, that I'm going to be sending you. It's a link. It's on YouTube. The man is very, very excellent. And he does, um, he shows you how from scratch to do a desktop publishing, and then he makes it into a template and he's wonderful. Um, it's, there's not a lot of books out there for uh, pages, but there's a lot of good stuff on the internet, especially on YouTube. Any more questions? Okay, I'm gonna stop my share. And I wanna really thank you for coming to this class. I was really worried about it. So, <laughs> so if you ever have any questions. Liked it. Okay. Thank you. See so you much. later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.